What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now in this video, I'm gonna be telling you everything there is to know about the John Deere S130. So let's go ahead and start off with our model number. Really simple here in the 100 series, which is indicated by the one right after the S here. Now the S is going to be the indicator for the series. So within the tractor style mowers, we're going to have S series mowers and X series mowers. So within the S series, you're gonna have the 100 series and the 200 series. Now the 100 series here is gonna have models that range from the 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 160, 170 and 180. So right here, we have the 130. So this is gonna be on the lower end of the 100 series. What that 30 is gonna indicate is going to be deck size mainly and engine size. Now to get into that, let's go ahead and talk about our engine. So what we have here is going to be a 22 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Now, if you look right here on top of the engine, you're gonna see this is a John Deere branded 22 horsepower. But if we look over here on the right hand side of the engine, you are gonna see this Briggs and Stratton sticker, making sure to reassure you that this is a Briggs and Stratton engine. Now, whenever we're talking about the service points on this engine, we'll go ahead and start over here on the right hand side. So over here, we're going to have our engine oil dipstick and oil fill. So this is gonna have this yellow cap on it right here. We can raise this up and out. That is going to be where we check our oil and also where we fill it. Then right up in front of that, just a little ways, is going to be one of our spark plugs. Now this 22 horsepower engine is a V-twin, meaning it has two cylinders, so you will have two spark plugs. So in the same spot, only over here on the left-hand side, we will have our other spark plug. Then right above that, we are going to have our fuel pump. This is gonna be good to know where this is at because this could often be a problem if we're having fuel issues with this mower. Very simple and easy to change. So right there is where that fuel pump is gonna be. Then if we move down over here on our left hand side, we're going to have our fuel filter. Then right back here to the back, we will see the large easy change oil system filter here. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is going to be a pre-filled filter that to change the oil, we simply have to take this filter off by the new filter put it on and that is all it takes to change the oil on this particular model. Now, if you are one of those is a little bit skeptical of this system, you can always buy the kit to change this back to a normal filter and drain system. But on this model, as it comes from the factory, you will not have a drain. You simply have to change this filter out. That's gonna take out a portion of the used oil and then refill it with a portion of new oil and a new filter. Then right up here on top of the engine, this is going to be where our air filter is. We simply have two twist screws here on top we unscrew those, lift this top, and then there is your air filter. And then also right back here behind the engine is going to be our battery. Very, very easy to get to right there. And last but not least on the service part of this mower, right up here on our hood, we're gonna have a periodic service chart right here that's always on the mower. You can't lose it, it's always there. When you raise your hood, you can see right then and there when to be reminded of those services that are due on the engine. Now, once we close the hood down here on the front of the machine, a couple of things to point out is the 130 is gonna come standard from the factory with a bumper installed. And then we're also gonna have two incandescent headlights here at the front. So if you're needing to do that mowing in the late evening, right there at dusk, or maybe you're having to do a little bit there at night, you do have a couple of headlights here to help you get through that mowing in those darker situations. All right, now moving into the operator station, before I hop on, the first thing I point out is you are going to have a nice high 15 inch high back seat. Once we raise that seat up, you are going to see that there is a suspension system, two spring suspension system on this machine. You're also going to have your fuel fill here. This is going to be a one and three quarter inch opening and a 2.4 gallon tank. Now, what we like to think is on these mowers, most mowers about a gallon an hour per mowing time. Now, this is gonna depend on the type of grass we're cutting, how thick it is, the conditions we're cutting in will all depend on that fuel consumption, but generally about a gallon an hour. And then also right back here on the back underneath the seat is going to be our cargo mount system, which are these two black circles here. So this is going to be used for many of our rear attachments, such as our baggers, sun canopies, other rear mounted items. This is a very important part to know what the cargo mount system is. So now I'll go ahead and hop on the mower. One thing I'd always like to mention about the tractor style mowers, 
is they are very easy to get onto. They are going to be driven almost just like your car. So if you're intimidated on trying to learn a different system, such as the zero turn, then a tractor style mower would be the way to go for you. So let's go ahead and go over all the controls here in the operator station. Like I said, this is gonna be the lowest series of mowers. So everything in here is pretty simple, pretty easy if you have to figure this out. Now, first thing is over here to the left is going to be our mower deck height setting. So this is going to go from four inches here at the top down to one inches and this is going to be in quarter inch increments and this is also going to be spring assisted so as we raise up on this you are going to have help in raising that heavy deck up then if we move up in front here on our foot deck right there on our left hand side is going to be our brake pedal now this is going to act as an actual brake whenever we are driving and it's also going to be our parking brake so pushed all the way forward with this orange handle up is going to be parking brake on once we push in on that pedal push down on our orange lever here. That is going to release the parking brake and then now this pedal will act as an actual brake. Now moving up here onto the steering column, what we're going to have is like we just showed our parking brake lever here. Then next we're going to have our throttle and choke all in one lever here. So you'll notice whenever you're running this all the way down here, we can raise up and you'll feel it, the lever kind of go into a notch. Once we kind of go into that notch, that is our high throttle setting right there. Then once we go past that little notch, this is gonna be choke. So once we want to start the mower, we wanna have this pushed all the way up and then we can start that mower. So moving right below our throttle, this yellow button here, this is gonna be our RIO button. This is our rear implement option button. So what this is, is if we want to mow in reverse, we have to first push this button, then start our rear descent. Then we can let off of this button and that'll let us, that'll allow us to mow in reverse. If we don't hit this button, this will kill the mower deck whenever we start to go in reverse. Now this is simply just a safety mechanism here. And some people find it super annoying and I totally get that. But keep in mind that this is for your safety. So whenever you're mowing in reverse, just make sure that we hit that button first and then go in reverse. And I'll show how this works here in just a minute. Now moving up in the center, we are going to have our hour meter and fuel gauge right here on deck. So yes, on the S130, you have the electronic fuel gauge instead of having the floating fuel gauge down below your seat. You have it right here, easy to see on your steering column. Now beside that is going to be our switch here. What we're gonna have is a stop position, a lights position, a run position, and then of course our start position all the way over here to the right. So if we wanted to mow with our lights on, once we get this mower started, we'd just click back one click here and we'd be in our lights position and then all the way back here to stop to turn this mower off. Just make sure when you go to kill this mower that you do leave it all the way in the stop position or if you're out here and you leave your key in your mower, make sure that the kids or anybody that you're not used to running this mower hasn't been messing with it because one common thing that happens is that people will turn this switch maybe kids or someone else just playing with the mower and they'll leave this light switch on during the day like it is right now and you'll never notice that those lights are on unless you walk around to the front and this can easily kill your battery so just make sure that this is always in the stop position or take that key out and put it up somewhere where somebody can't kill your battery so right below our key switch is going to be our pto switch on the s130 you do go to an electric pto now on the lower models you would have a handle here that you would raise up to manually engage your blades on this model here you have an electric clutch underneath so you simply have this pop button that you raise up to turn the blades on push down to turn the blades off and then to the right of our pto we are going to have a cruise control now this is going to be a lot like your automotive style cruise control once we're pushing forward on that pedal then we can raise up on this lever that is going to hold in place and that'll keep your same speed just like it would on your car so if you're making those long passes or long circles then you don't want to be holding down on that pedal the whole time you can use that cruise control to simply set that and then forget it drive cut and then whenever you are ready to turn that off we can simply just hit our brake like we would in our car or hit our reverse pedal and that will kick that off now over here to your right you're going to have your twin touch pedal system so this is a hydrostatic driven lawn tractor so all you have is a forward and reverse pedal in your throttle there are no gears there are no switching of gears or anything like that it's all going to be done right here at the pedals 
choose your speed and then the harder you push down either your forward or reverse pedal is the faster that you will go now over here to my right we are going to have a storage container right here it has a lid on it this is often where you're going to find your spare key this is where you can keep such things as your phone your wallet whatever those things are you need to have on board keep those right there and you can cover them up with that lid and then right behind that we are going to have a cup holder there for whatever type of beverage you may want to enjoy while mowing so moving here to the rear of the tractor just a couple of things to point out one is this is going to be where you will see your transaxles now on this s130 these are going to be a tough torque tlt 200 transaxle this is going to be the common transaxle in most of the s100 series so if you want to know a little bit more about these transaxles and what all they can hold and carry you can go on Tough Torque's website and look those up. Now keep in mind the TLT 200 is going to be one that is specifically made for John Deere. So what you'll want to look for is just the lower residential end of those transaxles on Tough Torque's website. Now also here at the back we are going to have our transaxle release lever. Now this is something that we hope you never have to use. But if you do get in a spot where you have to push this mower for some reason it won't start or we're stuck pulling this will release the transaxle then we can take off our parking brake and be able to easily push this mower if we have to now we have to make sure that once we're ready to go again that we push this lever in because if we have this lever out our pedals will not work because the transaxle has been disengaged so to re-engage it we simply push this in now we're also going to have a towing hitch here at the rear so we can use those rear towable implements such as a poly cart or a sprayer or any of those other things that do go on a pull style hitch you have that here at the rear then you're also going to have some slots here right here about midway down on this rear housing these are going to be for those rear attachments that hang on our cargo mount system almost every one of those hangable implements is going to utilize these slots right here so just so you know what those are those are going to be your attachment slots so next let's talk about our mower deck now on the s130 what we're going to have is a 13 gauge forged deck here meaning it is made out of one single piece of steel 13 gauge steel it is going to have a washout port on it there on top we're also going to have adjustable gauge wheels on both sides so these are going to be adjustable depending on the height that you're cutting at so we want to make sure that depending on what height we're cutting at we have those wheels adjusted to the right height they have a whole system on the back side where you can change that height to either lower them if we're cutting higher or raise them up if we're wanting to cut lower. Now we're also going to have two covers on this deck on our spindles. Those are gonna be removed by a bolt that is in those. So you want to make sure and remove those, clean out from underneath those spindles whenever we're done. But you have to have those covers on whenever running this mower because they not only act as covers, but they also act as belt guides, helping to hold that belt into that spindle pulley. So make sure that we're not taking those off and trying to leave them off whenever we're doing that cutting. And then over on our right hand side, we're gonna have that large discharge chute. This is gonna be on a spring loaded discharge flap. We wanna make sure that we're keeping that in place as well as that's a safety feature to make sure and keep that debris moving where it needs to go, pushing it behind you and keeping it off of you in those windy situations as much as possible. Now, both of these spindles are gonna be greasable. So we need to make sure that we are greasing those at least two or three times a year if we are one of those that's using this mower really really often then we want to grease those even more often than that making sure we grease those helps to ensure and prolong the life of this deck now another thing that we want to do is whenever we're talking about washing this deck or cleaning this deck is we want to use air as much as possible so the washout port really i would say that's only going to be if we've been in a really nasty sticky situation or say at the end of the year just to get everything good and cleaned out and then try to dry that off underneath as best as possible using your leaf blower or some compressed air or something because the more water that we add to these decks the more chance we get of rust and other buildup that will harm that deck so we want to make sure to use more air rather than water all right so now that we've seen everything i'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up so you can hear how it sounds so right here we're at our top position we're going to go all the way to choke start it let off of that choke once we hear it start we're going to dial this back down i'm going to go ahead and raise my deck all the way up here let off the parking brake now right here to go forward all i'm doing is hitting that forward pedal to go in reverse all i'm doing is hitting that reverse pedal 
very easy to drive, smooth. No power steering on this model, but I'm telling you right now that you don't need it. It is very, very smooth, even without that power steering. So now I've got my engine at about mid-throttle here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the deck. All right, so there is with the deck on. Now, like I talked about, you have to hit this button to go in reverse or it will kill the mower deck. So I've got the mower deck on. I'm gonna hit this reverse pedal. Right there, not only does it kill the deck, but it will try to kill your entire mower. So you'll definitely know you have to hit this button. So now if I push the button down, I can go in reverse, let off of that button, and I can continue in the reverse and go forward. But just remember, if we try to go backwards without hitting that button first, it will try to kill not only the deck, but the mower as well. So last but not least, let's talk a little bit about some specs, dimensions, warranty, and price. So some of the specs that you're going to want to know on this, we've already gone over. 22 horsepower engine, fuel tank capacity of 2.4 gallons. Now our forward traveling speed at the very top is going to be five and a half mile an hour. Going in reverse, you're going to be 3.2 mile an hour. And then as far as dimensions goes, we're going to be 45 inches tall with the tallest part being at the back of the seat. We're going to be 75 four inches long from the front of the front bumper to the rear. When we're talking about width, we're looking at 56 and a half wide with the chute down. Whenever we raise that up, we can be down to 46 and a half wide whenever we raise that up to get that out of the way. So that way, you know, if we need to get into a barn or into a back gate whatever those things may be we need probably at least 48 inches to get through that to be safe there and then as far as weight goes on this machine we're going to be at 462 pounds and then our towing capacity you're going to be right around 500 pounds now you have to keep in mind that on the towing capacity this is going to be the weight of the implement that you have plus whatever you're carrying in it. So if we have that rear poly cart hooked on and say it weighs 50 pounds, then just know we only can carry 450 in the rear of that machine. Now warranty on this machine is gonna be a two year, 120 hour bumper to bumper warranty, excluding all of those wear and tear items that you would normally think of, belts, blades, tires, etc. And then whenever we're looking at the price point on these machines, we're gonna be right around that $3,000 mark. Now keep in mind that you want to make sure and go in and talk to your local John Deere dealer before buying one of these machines to make sure there aren't any available discounts to you or there may be promotions going on and other things, other incentives that may be offered and also financing options. So make sure and talk to your local John Deere dealership when going to buy one of these machines. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you liked this video. If you did, we just ask that you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you need any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.